Hello, there's another top 10 list. This time it's the top 10 racing games available to humanity. And uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna run through the top 10 racing games that we, well, obviously we had played them all again. We say this every time, don't we? But we haven't played all the racing games available out there. So these are the ones that we've played, all the ones that we've owned, all that we still own. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's crack on with this list. Board games 4K. So, number 10 on this list is uh, a game by the Lamont Brothers. It's called Snow Tails, and it's a, essentially it's a dog racing, sort of dog sled racing game. Um, what you've got, you've got a, a modular track and you're constructing tracks or the ones that you, you want to construct on your own or ones that the, um, that the rule book tells you to do and you, you, you're racing these, these dog sleds through the alpine wilderness and uh, what you've got, you've got a, like a sort of a cardboard cut out dog sled and you're playing cards onto either side of this, this dog sled and depending on what you're, what you're playing, you, you're dog sled's gonna go either to the left or veer to the right but you've also got a break that you can you can add and all you're doing is you're taking the, the left and the right and that's how many how many uh, squares you move either to the left or the right and you take your break away from your speed and that's how far forward you go and uh, yeah it's, whilst it's not like the the deepest game in the world it's still quite fun it's quite thematic and um, yeah, it's not a bad racing game. It can be a little bit mathy, you know, not like complicated mathy, but where you're trying to figure out the how far you should move forward, how far you should drift. You're dealing with numbers quite a bit, so that's that's a bit of a niggle. But um, other than that, yeah, Snowtail is a great game. So number nine is a German game that won the Spiel des Jahres in 1992, and it's on our shelf up there. We had to get it imported from Germany because you can't get it over here in the UK. Uh, as far as I'm aware, but it's in Reifenbreit and it's uh, literally translated to within the width of a tyre, I think that's what it means. And um, yeah, so sort of a cartoony racing game, you, 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 it's based on the um, Tour de France, so you're going through this, this um, all these different terrains and each, each terrain means put stress on how fast you can move. But the thing that makes this uh, unique is the fact you can drift behind other riders and it's, uh, yeah, it's really clever. And it's a, it's a bit strange that it hasn't be, been reprinted up till now. So um, yeah, number nine, Um Reifenbreit. So number eight on this quite quick list is the Hare and the Tortoise. Not the old 1979 game, but the new one in the things of Fairy Tales thing or something. It's over there anyway. Yeah, so what you're doing at the beginning of the game, everyone is uh, given a card or two cards and they, they give you points at the end of the game if they win come second or third and then what you're doing is you're, you're taking cards off off of this deck and you're playing cards and depending on how many you play that's how that triggers the ability of the animal that, that you're gonna that you're um, gonna move so you might move the tortoise there's a wolf in there there's um, the fox and they've all got special abilities and they all move different different spaces so yeah it's quite clever it's a good one for, the, for young children my kids love this one fairy tale theme and um yeah it's the uh hair and the tortoise it's got a modular board so it's infinitely replayable up to a point and uh yeah that's our number eight so number seven on this list is the gorgeous looking jamaica and it's a it's a it's a racing game where you're going around the island of jamaica and you're racing around there and it's stopping off at pirate coves picking up loot and stuff you get um booty and you also collecting cannonballs so you can fire at your opponents <laughs> and, uh, yeah it's not um, it's not necessarily I don't think it's not necessarily the person that finishes first it's the person that finishes first ahead of I think and that you've also got the, um, the crew expansion that has been recently released and I think that's a sort of a must-have and it introduces the concept of the crew lay, lay in a tray waiting for you to use them and uh, yeah it's a fantastic game it looks absolutely fantastic it's a wonderful, wonderful game. It's still in print, and Jamaica is our number seven. 
to our number six is a game that we recently reviewed and done a playthrough for. It's Downforce, and it's a very, very simple uh, racing game. So you're, you're bidding on cars, you're collecting these cars at the beginning, and then you're racing these cars, and then depending on where they finish, that's how many points you get. But the amount of money that you bid to get hold of the cars in the beginning, you lose that at the end. So you may have more points at the end, but then you haven't got enough that, that many cars to race during the, during the game. So there's a nice sort of uh, push me pull you sort of aspect to this one. It's a very very basic game, you know. It's, it's young kids. I mean, they might have a, a little bit of a problem with the with the math, maths of it involved in totting up, and there's there's that score pad as well, which is a pain in the neck. But other than that, yeah, um, yeah, Downforce is a fantastic racing game. It's a bit of bidding, and I definitely recommend it. So number five on this list is another spill to jar when it was Camel Up and it's a game by Stefan Bugas that wasn't exactly meant to win the spill to jar I don't think it came out of nowhere as a bit of a surprise for a lot of people but it's a, again it's a very simple game and this, it, it, this is a racing game right but you're not it's one where you're not actually controlling the camels you, you've got these dice in this pyramid and you you, uh, you a random die comes out and that's it corresponds to the color of a camel and it, how far forward it moves but the thing about this so if a camel lands on top of a camel, any camels underneath that move will take those camels with it. So it's a nice little thing. And then you've got these uh, celebrity sort of characters, tycoons and things that you can uh, use to, to bid. And you've also, you can take the um, place tiles that move these camels backwards and forwards. So it's a nice, it's a nice, simple, excellent game. You don't never really know which camel's gonna win. And then you've got the um, expansion that adds a, a larger track and a bigger game and all, all sorts of different things. You've got like a cameraman module, all these different modules you can chuck in. And uh, yeah, it's recently got like a pretty pointless reprint really. It's bumped the price up to about 35 quid. I think we picked up Camel Up for about 15 quid. So we ain't gonna buy that. We'll, we'll stick with the original one, which is good enough. And uh, yes, Camel Up is number five, I think. So number four on this list is an oldie, but a good goldie in its um, Formula D. And it's essentially just a basic roll and move game but with the added bonus or the added surprise of when you certain corners on the board it will require you to stop a certain number of times and um, it's a it's a but while it's a roll and move game it's also a push your luck game so you're trying to scream around these corners at breakneck speed without crashing you know and um some of the rules can be a little bit convoluted you know like the advanced rules can be a bit difficult to sort of keep all these little rules in your head but um essentially you know it's got a massive back catalogue of tracks going back from the original formula day and then i think there was a, a version of it before that as well so there's hundreds and hundreds of tracks for this well probably not hundreds and hundreds but there's dozens of tracks for this and the the uh, recent printing is absolutely fantastic but do yourself a favor and get yourself another set of dice so number three in the, on this list of racing games is the Race to El Dorado. It's a game by Rainer Cadizia and it sees you hacking your way through the jungle, trying not to die first through the desert and uh, going down water rapids with, in a canoe. And um, it's a basic, you've got a bit of a deck building element in this. So you start, everyone starts off with the same basic cards and you can use these cards to move through different types of terrain or you can use them to um, buy other cards are upgraded cards of the same type which allow you to move further and buy more stuff so you, you're going through the thing through the terrain you're visiting caves to get special bonuses you're hiring different personalities or using different artifacts that you can buy along the way and it's just the first to get to El Dorado and it's absolutely fantastic there's a modular board there's a really decent expansion for this it's tense it's really really fast it's it's exciting and it's I just I don't know there's something about it there's a nice theme to it and it's just it's just like an Indiana Jones sort of run through the forest and run through the jungle run through the desert and get to the end and it, I always seem to win this one so maybe that's why I like it so much but yeah the race to El Dorado from Rana Canizia a wonderful wonderful racing game so number two on this list is a dexterity game and it's uh, spawned about six expansions now it's pitch car and uh, all this is, it's a load of uh, wooden MDF pieces of track that fit together like a jigsaw and you've got a little disc and you're flicking the disc around the track and that's it. There's a few like, little rules where if you come off the track or if you flip upside down or if you knock somebody off then you know you go back to where you were. So does our car but yeah that's all it is. There's about six expansions. You've got, um, you've got the stunt expansion which 
literally takes you up to another level. So you can go up to uh, flyovers, you've got um, jumps, you've got tunnels, you've got these crossover tracks, you've got these long, long extensions, and it's just one of the most fantastic games. It's, it's, I mean, you can, this is an event, it's an event game. So every, you know, tabletop day every year, we always have this out and it's always a blast. I mean, when you, when you get over that jump and <laughs> everybody, cheers for you you know it's just one of them fantastic games pitch car i mean it's a bit pricey if you get all the expansions but just start off with a base set and then work your way up over a number of years and it's just it, honestly this one will be with you for life it'll be, it'll be up there as a classic game you know like crokinole or um carom or any of those sorts of games uh, tumbling dice it's up there in, in fact yeah i'd say it was better than all of them it's just it's just one of them wonderful wonderful games that everyone can play kids adults you know, grandparents, anything, anybody can play this game and everybody will love it. I defy anybody not to love Pitch Car. So number one on this list, the best racing game of all time. This might be a bit of a surprise to you, but it's Arve Caesar. It's a game that's currently out of print and I don't think it's ever going to be, well, it probably will be reprinted, but I don't know. It was reprinted a few years ago by Asmodee, I think, um, but it wasn't as good. This We've got the original Ravensburger copy and the reason we like this one so much is because it's so fast it's over before you know it it's got just the right length for what it is and it just sees you take control of a little plastic horse and chariot race them around this um this track three times and um at one once out of those three laps you've got to throw this coin you've got a little alleyway you've got to go down the alleyway and throw this coin at caesar and shout oh hey caesar right if you don't do that you can't win the game but everyone's got a set of a uh, set of cards a deck of cards they've all got the numbers between one and six everyone's got the same things shuffle them up and then you draw three and then you play one and then you move that number forward but there's bottlenecks on the board so if you occupy a bottleneck no one can get get past you so you can hold them up and uh, you can stitch people up with this and uh, the thing is is the the one rule that you have to remember is if you're in the lead you cannot play a six so that sort of neuters the power of being in front all the time so there's always a catch-up mechanism but yeah this this one plays up to six players it works with uh, works with two three four five I mean this game is just so easy to get your head around I can teach you this in two seconds well, I'll just taught you Ella. but um, yeah you know really I mean a few more tracks might be might be a good thing because there are only two and I spot well four technically if you go backwards or whatever but yeah I mean, it might raise a few eyebrows being number one, but you know, it's, I'm never ever going to get rid of this. I'll always play it. If somebody said to me, you know, can we play Arve Caesar? I say, yeah. So there you go. That's number one, Arve Caesar from Ravensburger. So that's it. That's our top 10 racing games, racing board games that we enjoy, that we've played. Obviously, there's some we haven't played, but I mean, if you like this video, if you found it informative, if you've liked more top 10s, if you like board game playthroughs board game reviews then please subscribe to the channel like comment subscribe tell us what we're doing right tell us what we're doing wrong and if you like to see something in particular then if you see something around here that you you want to see then let us know in the comments 